Well, hello and welcome to Wildcat Week. I'm Roger Alcock. Well, men's basketball has been on the road for a few uh, games now and here in the studio to talk about their recent games on the road is one of the assistants. Super Dave Osborne is here in studio and man, are we ever lucky to have Dave Osborne in studio? Man, I, I feel uh, excited to be here with you today. I just wish we had a, a little bit better <laughs> yeah. news to exactly. talk about uh, this week, but. but Honestly, one of the things I was thinking about is, quite frankly, I think we get a little spoiled around here with, with some of the success. And, uh, and that's a good thing in a way, though, because people just expect every time the Wildcats go out on the floor, they're going to they're gonna win, you know. So that's good to have that expectation. But, boy, you get in the thick of the Crossroads League, and I know Coach Tongle said this, this may be as deep and solid of a league as we've seen in, in, in 15 years. It, there's a lot of good teams, a lot of good coaches, and a lot of good players out there. You go on the road, you know you're gonna be in for a battle. Yeah, it's a, it is a tough league, and as you're sitting there talking about it, I mean, even as a coaching staff and these guys, they have high expectations for themselves, but part of the season is how do you grow and how do you learn from some of the ups and downs along the way, and uh, we're hoping that we kind of lean into these couple tough games and, and grow from it. Well, and the other thing I think that maybe plays a little bit of factor in it, I think as coaches, well, as fans like to talk about the national championship, but you know, as a coach, that was last year. I mm -hmm. mean, that's, this is a long time ago. Fans will say, oh, we're the defending national champs, but this is a whole new team. But your opponents, no, that's a big target. They want to knock, they want to knock you off. That, that cliff, so to speak. Yeah, for sure. And I think you look at it, juniors transition to seniors and their new leadership on the, the team, and they've got to kind of grow into that role. And, again, it's a different team. Not everything that worked last year, you can't just roll out the same game plan mm -hmm. this year. Um, so we're learning. We're growing as a team. And like you said, you got a target on your back every time you come out for a game, and we've got good teams in the Crossroads League. We're going to talk. We're going to see some highlights here in just a second of the, the game at Spring Arbor. I want to talk really briefly about the loss at St. Francis. And that was just one of the games where maybe you just take the film and take the stats and you crunch them up and you throw it away because you shot the ball <laughs> so poorly against St. Francis. Then you go into the, the Spring Arbor game mm -hmm. and, and coach, you know, I don't think you guys shot the ball that poorly, but Spring Arbor was completely on fire in that first half. Yeah, I mean, we let them get out. So I think they went nine for 12 from three in yeah. the first half and uh, just let them get too many easy buckets inside. and. Uh, again, we, we pulled it within four after the first half, but then the second half kind of made our run, and then mm -hmm. just we didn't get shots to go, and maybe didn't take the best team shots that we could. And they got a good kid in Paul Merritt and Deck, yeah. and a bunch of guys that just know their roles. Uh, and when they do that, they just did a really good job executing down the stretch. You know, when I what, sometimes the stats don't tell the whole story, but you looked at at the first half. You know, you're you're in the ball game but you mentioned the, the three-point shooting they were nine to twelve i think spring arbor knocked down their first nine three-point attempts and so sometimes i'm like wondering at this game it's like why are we not down bigger than what we were right and we've got a powerful offense you know mm -hmm. we can get some stuff going on the offense and then the floor but again you only get certain spurts it tends to be in games where you can kind of shrink that gap or mm -hmm. you can pull away from a lead and for us you know, if we tighten up on the defensive end of the floor, you know, maybe we've got a lead going into halftime, and then when they make their runs, it's not widening their lead, or, you know, we're building on a little bit of a lead of our own. You know, in those two games, uh, this last two game stretch, you saw Joel Okafor just hit the three there, had the nice drive. He's played for pretty well for you guys. So he had 21 points against Spring Arbor, and he's looking maybe to score a little bit more for you when you need that. Yeah, he's definitely, he's definitely been pushing it, and attacking and being aggressive, and Again, as a senior and just a, a point guard, he's got to continue to look to how does he get other guys involved and how does he take the right shot, make the right pass, and really look to facilitate for the whole team. Well, despite that incredibly hot start, we uh, are going into the locker room as this is the end of the first half. They hit a great shot there to close out the half, but only down, what, 49 to 45. And I'm thinking, okay, we're down four. They can't possibly keep shooting basketball like that, but they had a good second half as well. Right. And I think if you look at it, we probably had a season low. I think we had one turnover in the mm -hmm. first half there, then came out in the second half and, and coughed it up nine times, which yeah. again, just giving the team nine extra possessions there in the second half. Uh, and again, at one point we cut it to two. Mm -hmm. And then again, probably the next three or four shots that we got aren't the, if you look at it, it's yeah. just our best team shot that we could have gotten. 
And again, a team like Spring Arbor, they're going to make you pay for that. Yeah, this is a stretch right here where after the Wildcats actually took the lead 55 to 53, they went on a 12 to 2 run and, you know, took the lead back and just could never quite recover from that. I don't think we ever got closer than five points, but uh, maybe a key in this second half in the whole game was credit to Spring Arbor. Their bench was really strong, and I think they outscored our bench like 33 to 16. Some guys maybe we weren't expecting really stepped up for them. Yeah, I think one of those things where anybody that you're bringing off the bench just tends to be guys that can play or is going to play hard. And those guys, credit them, they came in, they played hard and uh, got the ball to go, and we didn't get the stops that we needed. You see Seth Maxwell knocking down some free throws there. Uh, you know, I, I, I got to think though we are liking what we're seeing from the freshman Seth Maxwell. He's playing more minutes and, and doing some really good things. He can shoot the ball, he can play inside. He passes the ball really well. Yeah, and I think the, the thing that as just players and coaches we're excited about is just to see the maturation process of Seth, right? He's got himself going a little bit more and uh, again as a coach you just want to keep pushing those guys to take the next step and um, I think his older brother is going to continue to, to challenge him yeah. to, to do that. You know, we saw Kyle Mangus just a minute ago there knock down that big three. But boy, again, credit to Spring Arbor. Every time you guys maybe hit a big shot, they had a response for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, this was quite, this was a big win for them. They were pretty jacked up about this victory. Yeah, I mean, with this win, they kind of take the, the, the reins on the crossroad mm -hmm. league right now. I think they're four and one, sitting mm -hmm. there 12 and two overall. They've beaten the number, or they've beaten Marion, and then they've beaten us. So uh, they find themselves in a good spot. And again, we knew going into this game on the road, Spring Arbor, just a team that's well coached and they, they all know their roles and they play to their strengths. Uh, it's a tough game to, to win and when we don't execute and kind of take care of some things we need to, uh, credit them to, for coming out with the win. Well, okay, we talked about the bad news, two losses, but it's still in the Crossroads League, the Wildcats are three and two, and there's a lot of basketball yet to be played in the league. But before we get to that, you have a break now. Yep. Students are in, in finals, right? And actually, we have students who play basketball here as well, right? Yes, we do. <laughs> as, we do. And uh, so, obviously, that's a big week for, for these guys is, is finals. But then get a chance to get away from mm -hmm. all that and just focus in on basketball, go down to Florida. Now, you play some pretty good teams down we in do. Lakeland, Florida. Uh, Southeastern, I think they're, they're top 15 in the country. Yeah, I think Maybe they're 11 right now. Yeah. So you'll play, you have a chance to get away, play some good competition, and you talked about growing and getting better. These trips hopefully can help do that for you. Yeah, and I think even just getting away helps your guys kind of merge together and forge together as a team, and I think that's something we're looking for. So obviously getting a chance to be away, spend some nights in, in some hotels, mm -hmm. play some you know different competition, and uh, that's, that's something we're looking forward to, and again, just collective focus from the group is again you don't have some of these other distractions when we get a chance to get away because when you get back we have a game against a, a, a very good indiana tech team mm -hmm. here between christmas and new year's but then it's back to the crossroads league and then you know well the season really kicks in that yeah, kind of second half of the season it doesn't get very or it doesn't start easy because uh bethel will be coming to town and of course they're always one of the top teams in the conference but uh um you know, hey, that's why you play the games, I guess, because right. you want to play play good teams, and it should be a lot of fun. The league should be, for us to watching, it should be a lot of fun for coaches. I imagine it it'll maybe cause you to scratch your head a few times. Yeah, probably so. But looking forward to to getting back after it. You know, when you've lost two in a row, you want to get back out there and try to avenge a, a loss or two. All right. Well, hey, coach. Uh, Thank you so much for coming in. It's appreciate always good, you having me. Always good to have Super Dave in the studio. All right. Well, as we said, the Wildcats will be back in action against Southeastern University down in Lakeland, Florida. Game time will be 7 p.m. on December the 14th. Well, when we come back, we'll take a look at women's basketball as head coach Ethan Whaley joins us here in the studio. Hey, well, welcome back to Wildcat Week. The women's basketball team is on quite a roll. Their winning streak extends to five now in conference play. And here to talk about some of their recent success, here's the head coach of the Wildcats, Ethan Whaley, along with freshman point guard Margot Woofter. And so, Coach Margot, welcome to the show. 
Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Margo, I told you we're going to start with Coach Williams, but I guess start with you. Okay. Is this not the culmination of a lifelong dream now to be in Wildcat Week? Yes. <laughs> hey, Mom. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, Coach, uh, we kind of teased a little bit, but right now the Wildcats are 5-0 in conference play, alone at the top of the conference standings. I know there's a lot of basketball left to be played, but it's sure better to be 5-0 and than maybe 0-5, and, 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 and it puts you in a good spot as we get into a little bit of a break here. Yeah, yeah, I think the thing that we're hanging our hat on right now is we, we put ourselves in the best possible situation we can be in, and that's obviously the top of the league. Um, we haven't dropped any that would, that would hurt us maybe later on in the season. Um, but like you said, we got 13 more games to go. It's a long, long stretch that we've got left ahead of us, and uh, we're focused on getting better a little bit more every single day. Obviously, it means that you've also won some games on the road, and that's not easy to do in the conference, especially a place like St. Francis. I want to talk to you about that game because I'm try I, I try to think, and I didn't go back and, and study it too much, but I can't remember the last time a Wildcat team has been in a three-overtime contest, and uh, that is definitely a battle uh, or a test of your character and will and determination, and the key to that, people are going to look at you scored 100 points, but to me, I looked at the end of regulation, I think the end of the first to overtime and the end of the third overtime, all three times St. Francis had the ball with a chance to win. Your defense had to come up with big stops in those situations. Yeah, yeah, I think there was a lot of resilience shown and a lot of resolve with our team. And to answer your question, the last time prior to that was uh, Huntington, the year before I got the job, there was a four overtime oh, game wow. at home that they we pulled out as well. But. Um, as far as the other night, I think, you know, I think back to it, there was two minutes left in the first overtime. We were down five. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to get a stop. Margo mm -hmm. came down, hit a three, mm -hmm. and then we got another stop. And, and uh, the exchange obviously led with, finished with a basket. We went into second overtime. And it just felt like every time that St. Francis threw a punch, mm -hmm. we took it and we threw one right back, and, and we were fortunate to come out with a win. Margo, I was going to ask you, because he don't mention that shot you hit in one overtime, but uh, in that scenario, you you're playing well, you've scored, you know, you're shooting the ball well. I guess what's your mindset? Because it's, I don't think you're afraid to take the shot when your team needs it. And, but I was kind of curious what your mindset was going into, into those kinds of situations. Um, yeah, just trying to be like fearless in whatever they give me take. And I just remember like dribbling down and she didn't come out. And coach always says we don't need like a six point bucket. Yeah. But I was like, if they're just gonna give this to me, I guess I'll take it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Well, again, a big victory, and you guys d did a great job. One to, we're going to see some highlights now of the St. Francis, excuse me, the, the Spring Arbor game. And, and then, Margo, um, you kind of helped propel the team to a great start in that first quarter. And I thought that was kind of key on the road. That first quarter, you guys jumped out, what was it, 26 to 16, 5 of 11 from the three-point range. So that had to be kind of feel good on an early Saturday to, to get off the hot start there. Yeah, for sure, just come out rolling definitely feels good and we got we usually struggle in that zone but it was fun to get a flow and work the ball around and get easy buckets early. You know, I was gonna ask you one more question, Margo, is like, you know, in that game against St. Francis, I think Nicole and Ignacia had like twenty eight points. Yeah. She's just been a machine. And I know she was a little hobbled in this game, but when you've got good post players, you can have confidence. That's a great feeling as a point guard, especially you know it, it, all of it doesn't fall on your shoulders. Yeah, no, for sure. It's it's super fun when you got Nicole going down low and then it opens it up on the outside for us shooters to get open. It's It's been really fun basketball, for sure. Now, Coach, you know, we look at that score a minute ago. Spring Arbor was actually up, but the last five minutes of this first quarter, you guys really took control. You don't see a lot of defensive highlights, but I think defense picked it up. And again, yeah, you're uh, showing a lot of layups. Yeah, Spring exactly. Arbor, right? <laughs> but you're getting great looks at the other end. That means you're, you're you're running some pretty good offense there. Yeah, well, you you alluded to it with Nicole, whether it's Nicole, Elena, or Ann inside. When you can have a post presence in the paint, mm -hmm. and then obviously great guard play on the perimeter, uh, it makes you really difficult to guard. And, and I felt like Saturday, um, we we were really good. We were really efficient. Um, and then on the defensive end, especially in the second half, uh, we forced 17 turnovers in the second half. And then. And obviously, defense led to offense. We got great looks. I loved our shot portfolio. Yeah. And, and uh, we had a big second half that, that propelled us for a big win. See Janae Gibson with the, uh, uh, Janae Gibson. <laughs> Janae Goodwin with the baseline <laughs> jumper. Well, she had a couple big threes for against St. Francis. But I, I guess I bring her up, and Stephanie Conrad hit that three earlier. 
your bench is, I think, finding their niche and, and making good contributions for you guys. Yeah, yeah, we, you know, we wanted to play a little faster tempo because we believe that we, we trust our depth and trust our bench. And so when you can make depth a factor by, by going at people and trying to wear them down, we feel like it uh, gives us the upper hand because we have nine or ten that, that we feel confident in at, at any point in the game. And, and Margo, it lets people think all you do is sit back and shoot a three. You, you don't mind taking to the basket as well when you have that kind of one-on-one -on -one and and make the good aggressive play, see if you can't get to the line. But is there a key to that? Like when you know, hey, it's time for me to drive or shoot a three, is just kind of reading the defense? I think it's reading the defense. Um, Coach Gibbs actually always says just be in attack mode and then mm -hmm. just have that mentality and you kind of read and see what the defense gives you. But You see antsy, Chris, oh. inside. Here's the other thing, Coach. Sometimes you get a big lead. You went in the locker room and, you know, halftime with a big lead. Your third quarter was almost as good as your first quarter. I, I think that's kind of a positive sign to know you, your team wasn't just kind of like put it, putting it into cruise control, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, we won that, that third quarter. I believe it was something like 24 to four. And like I said, we, we really, I, I was happy with our defense. Mm -hmm. We amped up the pressure. Our ball presence was <clears> terrific. And, and like I said, in the second half, Spring Arbor turned it over 17 mm -hmm. times versus our pressure. And, and that was the difference in the game. It, it wasn't, we made shots, it wasn't, um, they were bad defensively, it was that we really were, were very aggressive defensively. Someone else I wanted to talk about, you know, really quick in, in here was, uh, there's Michaela Martini getting on the scoreboard there, but Elena Dejua, you mentioned her briefly, but this is the second straight game where she's had a double-double. And so, you know, not only being productive offensively, but, you know, double, you know, double-digit rebounds isn't easy. And she's had that, you know, two games in a row. So. Great effort by Elena. She, well, she'd be starting a lot of places. I have no doubt about that in my mind. Yeah, yeah, you know, you could go so many directions, but I think Elena uh, somewhat embodies who we want our team to be, and that's who cares about what your role is, who cares about who's starting. Whatever you're given, let's go <clears> in and maximize it. And, and she's the epitome of that. So proud of her and obviously so happy for her success, as is everyone, mm -hmm. because all she does is come in and work every single day. And, mm -hmm. and you guys are seeing it on the court, but we've been fortunate enough mm -hmm. to see it all summer, all preseason, and now every day throughout the year. Well, Margo, I want to get back to you a little bit. I mean, it, you know, Wildcats are what now on the season? I think 10 and 4. So you're already 14 games in a season, and it's only half, you know, the season's half over, mm -hmm. but it can be a grueling schedule, and it can be a big adjustment for freshmen. But from a spectator's point of view, it does seem like you're starting to find your stride a little bit of what maybe the differences in the college game are, what your role is a point guard. But for you, what has maybe been the biggest surprise or the biggest adjustment you've had to make so far? Um, I think it was just kind of figuring out where we all fit on the team. Mm -hmm. And um, I, th I talked to Coach Willie. I definitely struggled at first with wanting to be a point guard and a distributor and then kind of being a little passive mm -hmm. and um, I think I'm starting to kind of figure out that balance of mm -hmm. attack and distribute um, but I'm still definitely figuring it out but I, I have awesome teammates to pick me up so it's been such a fun smooth learning process with this team. And, and it's not just the basketball it's the difference in you know adjusting to school the academics that schedule it's a big I mean it's much different than high school, isn't it? For sure, yeah. But I, I love it. Like, I thought I worked hard in high school, and mm -hmm. you come to college, and it's, it is fun. I mean this in a humble way to realize how much better you can get when it really does become, like, your job. Mm -hmm. And I, like, in my teammates and in myself, I've grown the most as a player and a person here in the short amount of time, and, and I didn't even expect it, and it was super fun. Well, so now, Coach, you guys have a little bit of break. It's important time, obviously very important time for students with – with their uh, 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 finals up, uh, coming up this week. But then you have a chance to maybe just focus in on basketball. And is there, I know you have some non-conference games, but probably the biggest focus, just improving as a team. I, I, what, what would you hope to accomplish in, the, in this uh, in-between time? Yeah, yeah, you know, we've been fortunate there. Uh, we, you said it earlier, we've, we've got a five-game win streak in the league, but um, we still turn the ball over too much. Um, we, can, <laughs> we can be more efficient. Mm -hmm. And so taking care of the basketball is going to be a big priority for us. 
um, and, and just tightening up. Margo's Margo's one example of somebody who's evolved, but mm -hmm. even she'll tell you there's a lot of things that she needs to improve upon and get better on mm -hmm. as we approach the second half of conference. So very happy with the start, but. Uh, the list just is too long, Raj, for us to talk about everything <laughs> that we need to correct and get better at. But we're excited about this break. We're excited to, you know, kind of get rejuvenated with our family and then come back and get back to work. All right. Well, Margo, Coach, thanks for stopping by and uh, look forward to broadcasting a little more Wildcat yeah. basketball this mm -hmm. year. Can't wait. Thanks for having us. Well, the women's basketball team will be in action against uh, Madonna up at uh, – up in uh, Michigan, Detroit area. That game is coming up. Then they will be back at home December the 22nd against Brescia. Well, when we come back, Michaela Woodfork will bring us the breakdown and we'll talk to the head coach of the IW uh, swimming team and take a look at them in the second season. Well, welcome back to Wildcat Week. You know, we have so many different sports competing on this campus and to help us bring us up to date in this two minute drill, we will send it over to Michaela Woodfork with the breakdown. Thanks Roger. The Wildcats played a lot of basketball this week. The men weren't so lucky this week as they suffered two tough losses. They first faced St. Francis losing 85 to 71. This was the first game that they have lost in over a month and at a 71 total points, this was the men's lowest scoring game this season. They struggled right off the bat by failing to score a basket for over five minutes in the first half, leaving them behind at 36 to 27 at halftime. Unfortunately, the funk that they were in carried over into their next game against Spring Arbor, which they lost 96 to 86. With 15 minutes left in the game, the Wildcats had a 55 to 53 lead, but Spring Arbor was able to come back and win the game. It's okay though, because the ladies were definitely lucky lunatics this past week. They first beat St. Francis by just one point in three overtimes. The ladies definitely played their hearts out for the win, and they carried that same energy into the next game against Spring Arbor, which they won 77 to 46, making it their fifth straight win. This means that they've started the Crossroads League with a perfect 5-0 start, and they are the only ones in the league that are undefeated. Junior Elena Adedua had a great performance these past two games as she picked up two double-doubles. And freshman Margot Woofter has had an amazing last five games, averaging at 21 points and shooting 58% from the three-point line. Let me just say, these girls are on fire. Well, that's all I have for you this week on The Breakdown. Back to you, Roger. Well, thank you so much, Michaela. Well, as you may know, IW Swimming is only in their second season, and they have already qualified eight individuals and five teams for the national tournament. Daniel McMurray took a look at how the swim team went from a startup program to a national contender. Cats don't usually like water, but these cats can't get enough of it. Linnea Holmgren says she's just continuing a long tradition. I swim competitively pretty much till I was 10. So that's when I started. The Indiana Wesleyan team is only on its second season and is already creating a culture of success and family. Uh, we feed off each other's success and we motivate each other as like good as we can. It's like the best swim team I think I've ever been on personally. Um, the girls here truly are like my family. We encourage one another, we push each other in practice and challenge each other. The players say they're close to one another, and it only fuels their performance and preparation for what is to come. Coaching staff says the team is prepping for bigger meets in the future. We're gearing up for conference and, and nationals, which will be not for another couple months, but that's kind of where we're headed. We have a few meets before then that we can hopefully have some good swims at as well, but our eyes are set on those big meets at the end of our season. The team may be new and young, but with plenty of hard work and direction from the coaching staff, this team has great potential both in and out of the water. For Grant Connected News, I'm Daniel McMurray. Well, thank you so much, Daniel. Swimming will be back in action this Friday, December the 14th, as they travel down to the University of Indianapolis. That meet starts at 5 p.m. Well, that is all we have for you on this episode of Wildcat Week. If you would like to see more Wildcat Week, you can visit our website at WIWTV.com. 
There you can watch past episodes and connect with us online. Once again, that is WIWTV.com. And you can stay connected with all our local programming by subscribing to our YouTube channel. That is WIWTV51. Well, we look forward to seeing you next week. So for all of us here, thank you for watching Wildcat Week.